All right, here are my top 25 siege tips from beginner to advanced. Number one, just play more. I oftentimes get asked by new players what they should do to get better, and the truth is that you just need to play more. Now, I'll be going over specific things that you guys can do to speed up this process later in the video, but the truth is that most of you will simply just need to play more than you are now. Now, I know not all of you have the time to simply just play more. So here's a tip on how you can use your time more efficiently in game. By simply playing the game, you will undoubtedly slowly improve. But if you want to get better as fast as possible, then you need to be going into each play session with a goal in mind. That goal could be anything, such as keeping a positive KD, learning a new strat or map, learning a new role, or anything else that you guys can think of. People really underestimate how much this will speed up the learning process. Before you even start playing the game though, it's really important that you guys have some of the basic settings out of the way. I have a full link settings video going over each option that I'll link below, but here are some basics to look out for. Firstly, check out your FOV as the default is 60. I would avoid playing at low FOVs, so try to play around with this to see what works best for you. Personally, I play on 84 FOV. It's also important to make sure that your shadows are set to medium in the video settings tab so that you get those dynamic shadows. You'll also want to turn off screen shake in the accessibility section. Another common question is what operator should I buy first? So I'm going to give you guys five of my favorite operators to play for both attack and defense, starting with attack. Sledge, Iana, Ash, Sophia, and Buck. As for defense, I would pick up Doc, Ella, Alibi, Rook, and Capkin. These operators you will see commonly picked and ranked and you'll never really have to worry if you pick the wrong operator and they're all very new player friendly and easy to pick up. On screen is a list of all the maps currently in the ranked map pool. I would recommend trying to learn each map one by one as there is so much that you need to learn on each map before you can say that you truly mastered it. Know that this will take some time, but by going map by map and avoiding trying to learn the casual maps first, you will learn the maps way faster than your average player. Now speaking of maps, make sure that you guys are using your compass as it'll tell you the callout of the room that you're in. This makes learning callouts on all the different maps super easy, so if you ever get confused at where you are, just look down at the compass. Here's the fastest way to learn all the different angles and peaks on any map. Simply pick Buck and go into T-Hunt on Bomb and clear out all of the enemies. So long as you don't plant the bomb, you can run around the map without enemies respawning. Now use the resupply boxes to refill your shotgun ammo. You now have infinite shotgun ammo and can completely destroy the entire map. This makes learning new angles and existing angles very, very easy. Take the time to read over which attachment does what, so you're getting the most out of all your weapons. For example, if you're using a gun with almost no recoil, consider throwing on an extended barrel which will slightly increase your recoil, but will also give your weapon some extra damage. Next up, unbind your sprint key. Okay, so maybe not actually, but try to be a little bit more mindful of when to and when not to sprint. This goes for high rank and low rank players. Hengu even called out a pro player for doing it in pro league the other day. So this is something that everybody can work on. Just make sure you aren't sprinting into people constantly, especially if you're in a 1vx situation. To help you stop sprinting as much, you can bind sprint to a harder to press key. This will stop you from impulsively sprinting when you shouldn't. Just remember to rebind it when you break your bad habits because this can work both ways. We're going to be slowly moving into some more advanced topics now, but don't worry as every one of these tips will have important information for all ranks. Now that you've got some of the basics down, it's time to enter the ranked trenches. But before you queue up, consider inviting some of your friends to play with you. Because don't forget that Siege is a team-based game and is designed around teamwork. Going in without a 5 stack is the number one reason why most people cannot rank up. Your 20 kills won't mean anything when your teammates won't call out and you're against a coordinated 5 stack. It's for this reason that I created Sixshot Academy, a community resource where you guys can find like-minded players to queue ranked with. I even partner with some of the biggest names in Siege, such as Jinxie, Fraction, Athena, and many more. Multiple times a week, we will hop in calls with you guys and give live coaching as well as queue ranked with you and help you rank up. We even do 10-mans where you guys can get a feel for the competitive side of Siege. So if you guys are looking for a good 5 stack or you're wanting to learn from the best of the best in Siege, then consider checking out the link in the description to Six Shot Academy and join the fastest growing community resource in Siege. Get creative with your gadgets. Remember, Siege isn't Call of Duty. Whether you win or lose is very much decided by how well you use the operators to your advantage. There are a bunch of cool tricks you could do, such as this one on Chalet with Fuse. If 
you go to the canine balcony, you can actually fuse this window over and over to open up the entire floor below. This gives you an easy, but most importantly, safe way to open up the entire floor and play vertical on the downstairs bomb site. You can also use parts of the map to your advantage. For example, most people might put their Elamine right above this doorway, but from the new hatch, it could be shot very easy. I get around this by placing it behind this small sign. This blocks line of sight from the hatch and forces the enemies to walk into it or clear it with an explosive utility. You could go a long way in Siege without good mechanical skill, but it's really important that once you have the basics of the game down, you start trying to improve your mechanics. This is where your sensitivity will become very important. A common mistake I see from even longtime players is that their sensitivity will be far too high. I've had dozens of people tell me that after they took my advice of lowering their sensitivity, they saw an almost overnight change to their aim and KD. I recommend you guys stay at either 400 or 800 DPI and try to not go above 2020 in game. Most OG players will know this, but be careful to not plant the diffuser on top of a soft hatch. The last thing that you want to do is lose the game because of a hatch. If you didn't know, planting the diffuser on the soft hatch and then destroying the hatch immediately loses you the round on attack. High management is a big part of playing Siege, and this can be hard for a lot of new players to get used to. But always remember that on attack, you are racing against the clock. I see a lot of new players on attack not really sure what to do, so they spend a lot of time just crouching around or holding pointless angles. Make sure that you guys are not doing this. You should always have a plan in mind for each round, and if you don't, then throw your drone. Which brings me to my next tip, which is to slow down and check cams. If you're ever doing what I just talked about and you're confused on what to do, simply check cams or throw a drone. The reason you don't know what to do is because you don't have the information needed to make your next move. So this is exactly why you should slow down and drone out before making your next move. Stop maining operators. Now, I understand this sounds counterproductive, and you'll see that in other games, players maining one specific character, like in Valorant. But in Siege, the operator's abilities are far more important round to round than in other games. And this leads me to my next point, which is to use the attacker repick feature as often as possible. In Valorant, you pick your character and you're that character for the entire game. But in Siege, you can change your operator constantly. This means if you're maining a single operator, you could be holding your team back. This is exactly why you should be using the repick feature to counter whatever operators the defense is bringing. Now, you may be asking though, what should you do for defense? But that's exactly where a thought out strategy is going to be crucial. As you rank up, you guys will be going against more and more strats. It's important you learn these so that you know the best ways to set up each site. If you're playing Siege and you don't have even a basic site setup in mind, then that's a serious problem. These are the sort of things that take a lot of playtime to learn, but can be sped up by playing with and against higher skilled players, which brings me to my next point. I hear a lot of low rank players complaining when they're placed up against better players, and while I can understand how that could be very annoying if you're a super casual player, but if you're a competitive player who is looking to improve, you should see that as an opportunity. So if you see a high ranked player and you start saying, oh, they have three champs, we're going to lose or anything like that, then you need to change your mindset. You can't learn how to be champion from a gold, so don't be upset when you're placed against better players. They will teach you valuable lessons that you can take with you to your next games. I was copper on Xbox until I met some really nice pro players who helped me improve and I became better basically overnight. Now, I understand not everybody could just play with pro or champ players whenever they want, or at least you couldn't until I made Sixshot Academy, that is. You could ask anybody in the server about their huge increase in skill shortly after joining and playing with the top players in Siege. The best possible way to learn is through experience, and that's why this is such a unique opportunity. Continuing off of that, it's super important to just have fun when you're playing Siege. And you may be rolling your eyes saying that these are super basic tips, but that's where most players go wrong. A lot of players won't give these basic tips the time of day, but it's actually very important and part of the reason that they can't rank up. So we're getting close to the end of the list now. Because of that, I want to mention that no matter what, it will take you guys at least a few months to see massive improvement, which is why it's so important to make your short term goals so that you see continued progress and don't lose motivation. So if you're a month or two into playing Siege, just remember that Siege is arguably one of the hardest FPS games to learn. So don't get demotivated by slow growth, as slow growth will always beat no growth. So let's talk about responsibility and specifically when it comes to you dying in game. I see far too many players blame anything and everything before they blame themselves, and this will completely stop you from gaining anything from that death. 
whenever you get taken out you should try to analyze all of the things that led you up to that moment there is almost always a mistake somewhere in your gameplay if you died that's the hard truth that a lot of people simply won't accept and if you can't do that well then good luck improving and to wrap everything up just don't overcomplicate this if you want to improve, the simple truth is that you will do so by just playing the game. You don't even have to do anything besides play. These tips are a great way to speed up that process, however. Just remember to not overcomplicate everything, as that's when you'll start to lose the motivation to stick with the process. Alright guys, these were my top 25 siege tips from beginner to advanced. I hope that you guys learned something, and if you did, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Don't forget, if you want more in-depth and personal help from me or your other favorite YouTubers, or if you just want a place to find a good five stack then be sure to check out six shot academy with the link in the description